So today I'm joined by Jane Coppard, who is the Public Affairs Manager uh, for Roche Diagnostics. And Jane is the chair of ABHI's Cancer Group. Jane, thanks for joining us uh, today. Um, people are always interested in this. Just tell us a little bit about yourself and your background and such is relevant to your to your leadership of this group. Yeah, no, brilliant. Thanks, uh, Richard. Um, yeah, it's really great to have the opportunity today to to have to, to talk to you about this. Um, and, you know, it's a real odd privilege and honour to be the chair of the Cancer Working Group. So, yeah, just a little bit about myself. Um, as you say, I'm Public Affairs Manager at, at Roche. Um, I started life in this sector coming up to 40 years ago now, uh, starting in life science research. Um, then I transitioned um, after about seven years of research uh, into the um, industrial sector joined a company called Burring and Mannheim, um, who were subsequently bought by Roche. So I've always been on the diagnostic side of, of the business uh, there um, and have performed a, a whole variety of different roles um, in commercial, in technical support, as well as major company projects. Um, really happy for the last number of years now to be in the market access public affairs role within Roche um, and focusing on a number of disease areas, um, including oncology. Um, so I was really delighted when uh, last year ABHI looked to set up a working group for, for cancer um, and I was happily uh, elected as the, the chair for that group. So yeah, that's that's me in a nutshell. Richard. Well that's great and thanks for taking it on Jay. These groups don't work unless they've got good uh, quality leadership so we're, we're, we're thrilled you took on for us and um, okay we mentioned diagnostics obviously your kind of background just give us a sense of some of the offer that uh, the, the members of ABHI cancer group have and uh, it's obviously diagnostics there'll be other things as well yeah yeah for sure Richard so um yeah to so say the group group was set up um just before the pandemic hit actually so as a group we've only had one face to face meeting so it's been it's been quite challenging uh, that's for sure but but that's not stopped us um doing some some valuable work and i think you know what was really um i mean fascinating was when we sort of went across the group of companies that had joined the working group that actually when you look at the cancer care continuum from um, you know, looking at screening a, a healthy population to, to diagnosing, uh, to then treating um, patients as well. And treatment here, we're not talking about therapeutics, of course. And then right through to monitoring as well. Um, when we mapped that out, there was a, a number of different interventions that we got across that whole cancer care continuum. And I think that's what makes us as a group quite unique um, for, for the system to really engage with when you look at, in particular, the challenges that um, this health system is facing and, and, and nonetheless um, more critical than in the area of, of cancer diagnosis and treatment. That's where we find that in a lot of our groups, don't we, when we start looking across, as you mentioned, that uh, um, pathway, the continuum of care, just how uh, you know how many different places uh, our sector comes in and gets involved, which makes it, of course, a great, wonderfully diverse and exciting place to work. So, um, so relatively new, newly established group, uh, although it's difficult to work out how long things have been going, haven't they, since we all hibernated for 2020. Um, so tell us, um, tell us about some of your priorities and some of the stuff the group's going to be working on in the in the months ahead. Yeah, no, that's that's great, Richard. I mean, I think one of the things that we we recognised was that we really needed to have a voice in in the cancer space um, as the medical technology um, group here. Uh, so one of the things that we set about doing actually was to pull together a series of case studies that really illustrated this, um, uh, the, I guess, the types of innovations and technologies that we could bring to to the system, in particular through the lens of the battle as well. Um, so we've been putting those those case studies together and now we're starting to engage um, the system, you know, with with that, with a view to us really becoming the, the go to group uh, for the system when they're looking for new innovations to try to uh, tackle the, the actually still relatively core outcomes that we have here in the UK for cancer as well. So that's one of the kind of key activities that we've embarked upon. We'll continue to do so and, and through social media as well in terms of the various uh, cancer awareness days throughout the year, um, making sure that um, they're aware that MedTech has solutions um, to, to offer uh, across, across the piece there as well. I think one of the other areas that we're acutely aware of as well as a group is that 
um, invariably pharmaceuticals um, take the lion's share of the attention. Of course, they they can be curative or they can prolong life, and not to not to say that that should not not happen. Um, but when it comes to um, specialised pots of funding, um, they tend to take priority and medical technologies and diagnostics are overlooked in that respect. So I think there's a big disparity here that we need to point out to the, the system that actually if you funded some of these innovations through a similar type of funding arrangement um, that you may see some, some um, good improvements in terms of, of cancer outcomes. So that's one of the key things that we're looking to um, to work towards as we go forward in the, the uh, months and, and year or so ahead. That's great, well, Jane. Thanks so much for that. And I think a lot of people listening uh, to this and watching this will uh, will be able to uh, um, identify with your comments there about giving our sector a voice versus some of uh, some other sectors. And also, as case studies, case studies are the most just about the most powerful things uh, you can uh, you can have. Can you certainly in our world? Uh, uh, Jane, uh, working in that kind of public affairs space and dealing with people who are not necessarily um, technically as proficient as, uh, as healthcare professionals, obviously. So we look forward to seeing those. They've been really powerful in other areas. I think of the work our surgical instruments group have done and some of the great work that's been done in infection prevention, just um, making the point of where technology fits all along those, uh, those, those, those treatment continuums. And um, just leads me to say thank you so much for your, your leadership and your energy as always and uh, we look forward to seeing outputs of the group in the months ahead. Brilliant, thank you Richard.